Greetings. Welcome to a very foggy, murky hillside here on Holm Fell in the Lake District National Park. Excuse me a minute, just going to need to expose a frame. So, put my lens cap back on. Come on. So, today up on uh, Holm Fell, we've had a real mixture of weather. Started off, it rained. Then we had brilliant sunshine, then it clouded over a bit, and we had a mixture of sunshine and showers. And now we've got fog, effectively, or very, very uh, thick, swirling mist. I'm sorry, I need to take another frame. And this is why I'm uh, choosing to make a video, because the conditions up here are just so lovely that um, I've, I've got to set it down digitally. But what I'd also like to do is um, recount for you a few hints and tips with regard to making the most of conditions like this. So misty and murky, maybe with just a touch of rain in the air as well. So let's go and explore. So tip number one. Uh, whew, sorry, <laughs> I've been <coughs> tramping around these uh, mountains trying to find new compositions. They're just, it's just changing all the time. It's beautiful. Tip number one, try and position yourself so that the prevailing wind is behind you, especially when there's a bit of moisture being blown around. Now, hopefully it's pretty self-explanatory as to why I would suggest that. And principally it's to try and keep droplets of moisture off the front of your lens. Um, one uh, good method of um, determining wind direction is use your face. So actually try and turn yourself into what you believe to be the wind and use your the skin on your face as a, as a sensor to work out in which direction the wind is blowing. So that would be my first tip. Work out wind direction, try and shoot away from the wind. I know that then limits you to finding subjects that are downwind, but believe you me, uh, in conditions like this where there's gaps in the mist coming and going, there's plenty of subjects uh, and you won't regret that choice uh, because otherwise you'll be reaching into your bag to clean your lens every two seconds. So that would be tip number one. Tip number two. Shoot your images using your widest aperture that you've got possible. So uh, on the lens that I'm using there, the widest aperture I have is f4.5. In conditions like this, depth of focus is going to be negligible because the mist softens everything. So if something is slightly blurry in the background, really you're not going to notice, really you're not. Um, and even objects that are close to the frame um, when there's plenty of mist swirling around. Again, if it's ever so slightly out, you're not going to notice it. Now, why shoot with your aperture wide open? Well, if by accident you turn your lens into uh, the wind and you start to get a few droplets of moisture uh, on the lens and you don't notice, shooting at a wide aperture will mean that you are less likely to see those droplets of moisture uh, in your final result when you get home. Believe you me, I'm talking from experience here, there is nothing more frustrating than um, being out in the landscape, capturing some images, getting home, and finding a dirty great raindrop right in the middle of the image that's your most favorite from the day. So, really wide aperture, or the widest aperture that your lens will go. That would be tip number two. Tip number three, find a lens or use a lens that's got a really long lens hood or the longest lens hood that you've got. The lens I've got on my camera now, I'm to bring my camera into frame. Where is it? I think you can just about see it there. So I've got uh, my 14 to 150 millimeter lens uh, on uh, at the minute, and that's because it's got a relatively long uh, lens hood. Now, why have a relatively long lens hood? 
well hopefully again it's pretty self-explanatory it's to try and keep raindrops off so even when uh, at the moment <coughs> I don't have the lens cap on it's in my hand but the wind is it's sort of coming that way so I know the camera is perfectly safe but using a long lens hood gives me maximum security <coughs> to make sure that I don't get water droplets um, uh, droplets sorry uh, on the front of my lens and I can maximize the opportunities so that would be tip number I can't find the fingers three If you are enjoying this video and would like to support my channel, then please click on the thumbs up icon indicated here. To be notified when I upload new content, which will be every two weeks, then please consider subscribing. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. As well as subscribing, click on the bell icon and select all in order to get these notifications. All updates for new videos appear here on the top right hand side of your YouTube homepage. Right, so for tip number four, um, I'm now facing the camera and that's quite deliberate. So let's imagine for a moment that you have found a scene and it is ever so slightly into the prevailing wind. So you're running the risk of water droplets uh, hitting the front of your camera. Now it's gonna be quite hard to do this one-handed, but the way in which I would do that would be I would switch the camera on as it is now. I would have my hand over the lens and I would take the lens cap off very, very carefully. I would have my other hand underneath and I would drop the lens cap into uh, my other hand. Now the purpose of that is I'm trying to keep the lens covered. I would then choose a focal length that feels about right. And I would very quickly take my hand away and then put it back. I would then make an adjustment, take my hand away, put it back. And I would keep doing that, fine tuning the composition until I'm absolutely sure that I've got what I want. Uh, and then, and only then, uh, would I uh, take the shot. Um, and you just notice the mist is starting to clear in front of me, so I need to shoot a frame. Um, uh, focus, focus is it's a choice it's a personal choice um, right now with light levels failing I'm actually having to manual focus because uh, my Olympus camera and this combination of lens just won't do it it, it hunts so I'm choosing a focus uh, point and then I'm manually focusing but again if I was facing into the wind I would take my hand away adjust focus put my hand back and I would keep doing it until focus is right and then take my hand away take my image put my hand back with my other hand I would then go and collect the lens cap um, you know feed it back in put the lens cap back on and afterwards I would probably check the front of the lens uh, again you know uh, shielding uh, the lens with my body uh, just to make sure that that you know there is nothing that's crept on there but think back to whichever tip it was that talked uh, about um, uh, the wider aperture I think it was number three um, if you've selected a wider, wider your widest aperture and you've got some drops you're probably going to get away with them so horses for courses I would check uh, the lens and just make sure uh, but that's uh, that's my choice so that would be tip number four Tip number five, and my final tip, keep moving. Especially if mist is blowing through um, and time is short in the day, uh, as it is right now. It's, it's getting dark, it'll probably be dark uh, here in the next half to three quarters of an hour. Um, you're okay, I know my way off this uh, fell um, pretty well. But don't set yourself up in one position and just shoot that one position. Um, I'm walking along uh, right now. Uh, I'm quite safe. Uh, there's a quite well-defined footpath um, and uh, I can clearly see where I'm going. But I'm forever looking around me, looking over my shoulder um, because A, the scene will change, but the mist is also going to change. It changes in all directions, or it is right now anyway. So 
you know, I'm looking left and right, up and down, uh, looking at different objects coming and going in these misty conditions. Sometimes you can see the autumn colour, sometimes you can't. But if you don't move around, I swear to you, you're just not going to seize the opportunity and the potential that you've got uh, in your location. Um, I think that would be my last and final uh, tip. Uh, I need to make the most of the daylight and uh, run around this place and see what else that I can capture. I think I've actually found a, another rather lovely tree uh, to capture. So this is a little bit of a, a whistle stop video, um, but I hope you appreciate uh, why. And, to some extent it, um, it kind of feeds the, or should give you an impression of how exciting conditions like this uh, are but hopefully those five tips will give you some ideas and some suggestions that you can take into your own picture creation process if you're ever in conditions like these. So thank you very much for watching until next time thank you very much keep exploring and stay safe take care I'm off to go and see that tree over there.